Yes, it's Tennis Ace. I've had a few requests to do this one, so now that uh, Echo is uh, finished, Night in the Woods is finished, um, it's time to start up a new VN, so I thought we'd go with this. I'm only going to be doing uh, Shuichi's Route, for those of you who uh, know the game already. Uh, Dirk the Red Panda is doing all three routes, I think uh, Decalink might be as well, other people. So if you want to uh, check out Keisuke and uh, Jun's routes, there's plenty of options there. Now before we get started, I should point out that I do not speak Japanese, so I might be totally mangling a few of the names in here. But that's how things go when you have to use a different language. Anyway, let's start with this new game. And because I'm really not sure how to pronounce our MC's name, I'm using another first name, which none of you will get the reference to, which is fine. <laughs> I think we can stick with his last name. A cool breeze passes by, softly ruffling my fur. I bask in the mild weather of April, enjoying the feel of the sun against my skin. I can faintly hear the sound of the wind against the trees below and the chirping of birds above. I'm content to just laze around and watch the clouds in the sky. It has always been a good way to kill time where I had nothing better to do. Lately, though, it has developed into a habit. As I lay on the ground counting clouds, I feel myself drifting away into sleep. Just keeping my eyelids open seems like an impossible fight at this point. I'm tempted to just reach into my bag and grab my gaming console, but the thought of playing while fighting my urge to sleep is too troublesome. I'm snapped out of my sleep-induced days by the sound of the school bell. Is it already this late? Slowly, I hear voices. At first, there are only a few, but they keep increasing little by little. Students are probably leaving the auditorium now or are heading towards their classrooms. Others are likely carrying around pamphlets and trying to recruit new students for their clubs. I don't even have to look to know what's happening. It's the same scene every year, after all. Just the thought of being pushed around by all those people who keep trying to go to a million different places gives me a headache. I suppose I should head into class myself. Then I remembered that that teacher is going to be in charge of our homeroom this year. I think I'll just stay here and catch some sleep. Seems like the more comfortable approach. As I begin to feel the sweet calling of dreamland, a sudden noise snaps my mind back to reality. Did some student decide to wander onto the roof? Well, students aren't allowed up on the roof, so no one is supposed to come here. Well, as for me, well, I just come here for the peace and quiet. It's a great napping spot, after all. The sound of approaching steps echoes. I move my ears a bit to be able to hear it better. Is it... Is it coming towards me? Crap, have I been caught? Well, I had a feeling you would be here. My ears twitch the sound of a familiar voice. My body relaxes almost instantly. Ah, oh, thank God. It's not trouble. It's Chuichi. I slowly open my eyes, holding a hand up to block the sunlight from assaulting my vision. Standing atop me is a tall guy my own age with a kind, dry smile across his face. His bright green gaze looks directly at my eyes, nearly as bright as the morning sky above it. He looked like he didn't know whether he wanted to commend or chastise me. So in the end, he merely stood at that same spot, looking down at me with indecision. Finally, he sighed, scratching his chin and continuing to watch me with that smile. You do know morning assembly is already over, right? He sits down next to me with a huff, turning around to look at my face with a smile. Oh, I don't know how you managed to keep evading the teachers every single year, but they were royally pissed this time. I think your luck just might have run out. I'm somewhat taken aback by this nonchalant attitude. Shouldn't you be a little more pissed? I really thought he'd come over to drag me to the staff room. He puts both his arms behind his head and lies down on the ground next to me. I can feel the heat radiating from his body. Our arms slightly graze one another. Uh, 
I'm still feeling a little drowsy. Guess I might sleep for a few more minutes. Oh, by the way, my sister was looking for you this morning. Uh, did you speak to her? His voice breaks the pleasant silence from before. I don't really feel like speaking, so I just nod along. His tail shifts around next to him, whipping me in the legs. I turn my head slightly so he's in my sight. He looks somewhat annoyed by my lack of words. Eh, what a pain. Oh, she asked me to show her around school. I said that she should probably ask you instead. Uh, she wasn't amused. She reaches, she holds back a laugh. Uh, she also asked me if she looked cute in her u- new uniform. I told her it was so-so. Uh, she was not happy about that. This time he's unable to hold back and laugh softly, his shoulders moving up and down to the pleasant, pleasant rhythm. Uh, she tried to hit me with a bag. Uh, lucky for me, I'm a fast runner. She which he doubles over, clutching his stomach as he continues on his fit of laughter. It's not funny. Your sister is the devil. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I know I shouldn't laugh. He takes a few deep breaths, trying to stabilise himself. Little by little, his shoulders stop quivering. Okay, uh, I think I'm okay now. Really? You still look like you're about to burst into fits of laughter any minute now. Oh, sorry she was such a pain. Uh, she actually spent most of the summer sending me photos of her in different clothes, asking me what would look good for a first day of class. Well, at first I thought she was joking, but when semester was close to starting she hadn't stopped. Uh, I sent her a message reminding her of the uniform. And? Oh, she got mad at me because I didn't tell her sooner. Really? A high school student has to be reminded of the existence of the school uniform? Talk about a blunder. Oh, and it looks like she still has a major crush on you. Ugh, don't remind me. When we were kids, he took her a serious older brother complex, always following us around and saying that she wanted to marry her big bro when she grew up. In fact, I remember teasing Shuichi about it all the time. Why did she have to fall for me? If I let him know how much it annoys me, he'll tease me mercilessly for the rest of the day. Uh, Time for a tactical retreat. Change of subject. Oh, is your dad still out of town? That was the first thing that came to mind. Oh, God, I suck at this. His eyes say, really, that's the best you can do? But he still lets it slide. Ah, yeah, business trip to Taiwan. He'll stay there for most of the semester. Why don't you stay with your mom in the meantime? I'm sure she'd be thrilled about it. He took her too. At that moment, the look on his face is enough to tell me that I said something I shouldn't have. That's uh, an idea. Well, I don't really feel comfortable there. I feel like an outsider. Well, their house has stopped being my home a long time ago. Uh, someone has to watch over our house, so it's better if I stay there. Oh, it's not all bad, though. At least I can enjoy not having someone breathing down my neck about the chores that need to be done. And yet, I'm sure you'll do them all regardless. Come to think of it, I don't really remember much of his current house. I didn't really visit much since his parents got divorced. Maybe we should go there sometime to keep him company? I know he still has a hard time dealing with the divorce, even if he likes to pretend that everything is fine. Maybe I could come over. I'll even bring one of my gaming consoles. Oh, that actually sounds like a great idea. Oh, bring the Mega Neptune then. It has the best fighting games. Fighting games? Again? Are the only ones you can play? Oh no, but they're the only ones I can actually beat you in. How can he say something so sad with such a smile on his face? Ah, fair enough. I'll see if I can get some free time this week. I can go over and spend the night. We could pull a game in all nighter. Oh, deal. Well, except the part about the all-nighter. I don't think it'd be a good idea to lose sleep. Boo, such a goody two-shoes. It feels so natural to see him smiling all the time. It's weird to think he isn't always like this. Whenever he's dealing with a few people that aren't part of his group of friends, he always has such a serious look on his face. Honestly, it feels like two completely different people. He starts leaning back to lie on the floor as well, but just as his back is about to touch the floor, he shoots up. Oh shoot, I almost forgot. Uh, Saya-chan asked me to bring you on over after she's done instructing the new club members. 
Look at her. I was hoping she wouldn't have gone that far. Nah, nah, she's mistaken. I've taken a day off since there's anything important we need to do today. Oh, is that so? Uh, shouldn't the vice captain be there to be introduced to the new members? Shuichi shoots me such a suspicious look that I'm afraid he won't buy it. Uh, I guess I'll just give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. Luckily, he merely shrugs it off. I just managed to make a convincing lie on the spot. Good going, me. Uh, tennis club has things so easy. Oh, we had to jump through all sorts of hoops to get permission to use the courts during the break. Meanwhile, you guys had free access to them every day. Oh, it's so unfair. If you want better treatment, maybe you guys should start winning more. I had planned on getting up and bolting long before I finished my sentence, but I seemed to have overlooked one fatal flaw in my plan. My body is still feeling sluggish from sleep, taking too long to move. In that time, Shuichi. Unable to get up on time, I'm grabbed in a chokehold by Shuichi, who immediately starts grinding his fist at my head. Oh, was it my imagination? Oh, I could have sworn I heard a little brat trash talk in my precious volleyball club. It couldn't have been you, right? Well, this might seem like a bad situation for an average person. I'm already so used to this kind of treatment, it doesn't even faze me. In fact, even if Shuichi is a little annoyed at my comment, this is nothing more than rough play for him. If he really wanted to hurt me, I'd have no chance. Well, that guy is freakishly strong. While he definitely has his arm wrapped around my neck, the noose is loose enough that I can get out whenever I want. Still, I decide to humour him and play the part. Ah, Shuichi-san, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please forgive me, let me go. <laughs> Shuichi's body rumbles as he makes a choking noise. <laughs> Unable to hold it in, Shuichi begins to laugh with me still in his grip. Feeling his body vibrating like that is a strange, albeit familiar, sensation. But even though he can barely restrain his laughter, he continues to play his part. Oh, if you think forgiveness is going to come that easily, then you're sorely mistaken. It will take you at least 100 years to achieve penance. <laughs> Wait, Chuichi, you're tickling me. What's with that number? Be more realistic. Playing around like this is so nostalgic. It makes me miss the days of our childhood together. Well, not that those days ever really left. After all, we are rolling around on the rooftop in plain daylight. Chuichi gently pushes me away from him, giving me a tap on the shoulder. Oh, away with you now, heathen. I am done with your punishment. Ethan, when did this become an inquisition? Oh, I don't know. I'd always wanted to say a line like that. He's acting so silly right now that I can't help but laugh. Whenever we get together, we end up fooling around like little kids. It's why we stop studying together. We can never get things done. Well, this is our last year, you know. You should try and join high school life a little more. Whoa, the change of subject came so fast I can feel some whiplash. I am enjoying it. And also, what's with a sudden change of subject? Oh, no, you're not. You barely speak to anyone in school other than Saya, Urushahara and me. And that came from me being worried about you. Well, you should be happy. All right, Mom. And for your information, I have plenty of friends. Well, casual acquaintances aren't the same thing as friends. And I know that all of your classmates fall into that category. Well, that's not true. You're just overstating the requirements to friendship. Oh, uh, is that so? I shrug. Nothing I can say to change his mind, so I won't really bother to. Oh, by the way, uh, what time is it now? Oh, I can't hear the students downstairs anymore. Huh, that's true. It's gotten pretty quiet. Huh, I can't either. Wait, why are you asking me that? Just check your phone. Well, I left it in my bag. <laughs> You're so unprepared. I pull my phone out of my pocket and look at the time. Whoa, it's already past 11 a.m. 11.35? Shuichi almost shoots up. Shit, I'm late. I'm supposed to be helping with the new team members. Sorry I held you up here for so long. Shuichi gets up quickly, dusting his clothes off. Oh, is there any dirt on my back? Uh, nope, it's fine. I clean the rooftop, rooftop every day, you know. Well, it doesn't change the fact we are lying around on the floor. If this was going to be such a problem, why did you do it in the first place? 
Oh, it didn't feel like a problem at the time. I'll chalk it up to a lack of foresight. Now come on, I'm sure you have better things to do than fall asleep on a school rooftop. Or even if you end up skipping practice. Here, let me help you. Shuichi leans down towards me, offering me a hand. Seeing the blue sky shining brightly behind him and the gentle breeze ruffling his fur, for some reason I can feel myself blushing. Without really knowing why, I decide to look away and attempt to hide, like a kid that got caught doing something bad. I, I don't need help. I'm not a baby. Well, I'm not saying you are. But what's wrong with me trying to do something nice for a friend? I just want to help you. Damn smooth talker. Despite my protests, I still grab hold of his hand with him pulling up to my feet with ease. He actually pulls me with too much force and we end up bumping chests. My face lands square on his shoulder. It never ceases to amaze me how deceptively strong he is. I mean, he already looks strong, but he's still much stronger than he looks. If that makes any sense. Ow! Jeez, you're way too strong. Try to rein it in a little. You're going to end up throwing me off the building. <laughs> oh, sorry, you have so much fluff that you look much stockier than you really are. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, it's a compliment. I'm saying you're lighter than you look. Just as I'm pulling away from him, a particularly strong gust of wind blows against us, rustling my fur violently. Ugh, it's so windy up here. How'd you manage to stay here for so long? It's not usually this windy up here, you know. Plus, you're making for a pretty good windshield right now with how big you are. Although I decide against mentioning that part. My pocket starts vibrating with force. I already have an idea of who might be calling, so I choose to ignore it. Shuichido has completely stopped. His eyes are glued to my pants pocket. Aren't you going to get that? Nope. Well, it's in bad taste to ignore a call, you know. Well, spare me the lecture. I have a pretty good idea who it is, and this will be a conversation I'd rather avoid. Shuichi gives me a bemused, hmm. And in one fast movement, shoves a hand down my pocket, pickpocketing my phone. Hey, give that back. Hello, could this be Hector's secret girlfriend? Saya-chan? Uh-oh. Here's a development I didn't want to see occurring. The changes to his expression already enough to tell me that I'm busted. And screwed. I attempt to stealthily walk away from the situation. You have a match? You told me you were taking the day off. Crap. I am. Without consent. Shuichi starts rubbing his forehead. Yes, Aya-chan. Sure, I'll bring him. No! Shuichi hangs up the phone and looks at me with a grumpy expression. Well, I don't appreciate being lied to. I don't have to tell you every detail of my every waking moment, do I? Well, no, but you have to go to practice. Why? Well, it's your responsibility. Again, why? Well, because you're the vice captain for crying out loud, and this is not up for debate. Shuichi grabs me by my shirt collar and starts dragging me. Ah, I'll go, I'll go, you don't have to drag me. Sh Shuichi? Shuichi? Uh, Saya-chan, we're here. Saya stomps away over to us, nearly knocking down some students that were unlucky enough to be in her path. This was some kind of manga. I should say. <laughs> I'm 100% sure she'd have smoke coming out of her ears. You asshole! Yeah. I'm grabbed by the collar of my shirt and dragged to the courts. What's with people always grabbing me by my shirt? I have arms! Grab those, they don't cost money and there's no risk of ripping them. There's no way you're running away again! Oh, wait, Saya-chan, I promise I'm not going to try to escape. Please stop putting on my shirt. Saya Mitsugushi, one of my dear childhood friends, is the current captain of our school's tennis club. And fortunately for me, she is incredibly brash and hot-headed. Even though she looks so innocent and tries to act cute, she's a monster whenever she gets angry. And considering how easy she is to anger, one could say that she lives in a state of constant rage. Standing at 176 centimetres, she's also one of the tallest girls in school, which I find slightly unsettling. Uh, Mizugushi san I'd like to remind you that our new members are watching this little display here. Saya turns around to look at the source of that voice. Her nostrils flared and her brows furrowed. 
Not to mention that huge vein that's pulsing on her forehead. The one addressing her is Keisuke Rushihara, one of our juniors. Despite his age, he's by far the most responsible member of the team, and is constantly counted in Sire and I. Sometimes it feels like he's the one pulling the strings here instead of her seniors. Not 30 seconds after popping up to speak his mind, Kei-kun has already left to busy himself with something else. Somehow it seems his interference, or her brief, was enough to bring her back to her senses. Saya clears her throat and straightens her clothes, turning around to look at Shunichi. She still maintains a death grip on my shirt collar, though. Right, anyway, thanks for the help, Shu-chan. Oh, don't mention it. Uh, call me any time this unruly child gives you any more problems. He seems to be enjoying himself far more than he should. Bastard, I'll get him back for this. Gym number three, the one that houses the tennis court, is actually separated in half by a giant locker room. On one side we have the tennis courts, on the other we have the volleyball courts. So in the end it was incredibly convenient for him as he's already bound to come this way anyway. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some captaincy, captaincy duties to fulfil. He waves his goodbye, heading towards the locker rooms, supposedly for his own practice. Meanwhile, I can feel Sire leering at my back. A creeping sense of dread begins to settle. Well, Sire Chan, I guess I'll just... Freeze! <coughs> Her voice is so filled with authority I'm cut down before I even have a chance to speak. Before long, I completely toss away the foolish notion that I ever had a chance to escape. Why are you being so troublesome? You know about our club's tradition. We had to de delay practice because of you. I look away from her, trying to ignore the slight pang of guilt I feel in my chest. She is, of course, talking about our club's special yearly match featuring a junior and a senior player elected by members of those years to represent them in a special one-set match. No one really knows why they initially made it, but nowadays it's accepted as a way to show off our best players to those that are just joining the club. This is why this match takes place at the first day of class. Do I really have to? I already took part of it last year. Isn't there some kind of attendance limit to allow more pe people to participate? Even as I'm trying to find a way out of it, I already know the best I can do is buy some time. It's true enough that I've chosen to represent the juniors last year, defeating the seniors' representative by 6-3, the first time in over 10 years that the juniors had won. Yeah, I was pretty happy about it last year too. Look, normally I'd give you a pass, but all of the seniors voted for you this year. Be unfair to them if I picked someone else. Usually we host one match per gender category, so we'd have the girls and the boys playing in separate categories. But still, the guys are still allowed to vote on who they want to see representing the girls, and vice versa. That's a pretty neat system. Come on, it can't have been literally everyone. I know for a fact that I didn't vote for myself. Don't try to be cute. You didn't even vote at all. You were absent that day. Rats. And yes, you got every single one of the votes, 100%. Is it even that big of a surprise? You're a famous player in all of Japan. Of course our guys would want to watch you play. Doesn't help that you've been slacking off in practice the past year. I attempted to act frustrated by sighing as loudly as I can. I hoped that we'd see it and she'd see it and decide to take pity on me. It isn't very effective. Should I take that Sai as a sign you've resigned yourself to your fate? Yes? Great, then it's showtime. Sai grabs me by my wrist and starts dragging me to one of the courts. Just as I'm about to truly surrender my inescapable fate. I feel a hand touch my shoulder. As I turn around, I'm greeted at the sight of Keikun's face. Hey, hey, how about we take a little breather here, okay? Mizugushi, sir. Mishimaya san hasn't even changed out of his uniform yet. How's he supposed to play like this? Can't we at least give him some time to get changed? Keisuke, you're the best. Saya stares at him. The bulging vein on her forehead makes another appearance. Her brows twitch with frustration. Just when it seems she might not budge. Ah, fine. But be quick about it. I don't have to delay this any longer than I have to. Uh, so thank you. I'll be right back. I flash Keikun a thumbs up as a thank you. Now I just have to plot my escape. And don't even think of trying to run away, otherwise I'll hunt you down and make a fur coat out of your skin. Oh, on second thought. I dash towards the male locker room, trying to get this done as fast as I can. Every second I take makes Sire even more mad, and I can't risk that. Just then, 
I see Shuichi standing right next to me, hands still on the waistband of his jock strap as if he'd only just pulled it up. Ah, so, sorry. I turn around as fast as possible, trying to raise the image of my half-naked childhood friend from my mind. Being so self-conscious around half-naked people, I'm a failure as a Japanese person. Uh, is this really necessary? I'm not packing anything you haven't seen tons of times before. Sh shut up. Ugh. I'm not usually this much of a nervous wreck around naked people, but having no time to prepare myself mentally has made me completely shocked this sudden exposure. And it had to be Shuichi of all people? I can hear him softly chuckling from behind me, probably having a lot of fun at my breakdown. I mean, seeing someone in their underwear inside of a locker room is no big deal, and it's true that I've seen him wearing less before. Uh, no comment on that one. But, uh, I was a kid back then. I didn't really understand how embarrassing nudity is. In the end, I can't decide if I should make conversation, move towards my locker, or start undressing myself. I just stand frozen with my back turned away from him. Your eyes aren't going to fall off if you look at me, you know. Have you gotten dressed yet? Nope, and I'm not going to until you turn around and look at me. Well, why would you do that? Oh, because you're freaking out and it's hilarious. Ugh, I'm going to kill him. Th there, I'm looking. I can see more of you than I'd like to. Oh, God, did you have to be wearing a jockstrap? I can see your ass. Oh, this? Oh, it looks pretty snazzy, doesn't it? It looks like something you'd buy at a sex shop. Since when have you worn this kind of skimpy underwear? Well, how have you know that I bought this in an athletic gear store? Oh, it's actually pretty damn comfortable. It's great to practice in. Oh, one of my teammates, teammates recommended it to me a few weeks back and I gave it a try. Don't I look great in it? Whatever you want to believe. You know, for someone that's complaining so much about me being half naked, you sure seem to be interested in my crotch. Your eyes haven't left that area since you turned around. Sh shut up. I'm looking at the only area of your body that's still clothed. Mm-hmm, sure you are. Keep telling yourself that. Shuichi turns back to his locker room, picking up a change of clothes. There, I'm dressed. You can stop freaking out now. Thank you. God, my cheeks are so hot right now. Well, good thing your house has a bath. Well, I think you'd have a meltdown if you had to shower at school. I don't doubt that. I place my tennis bag on a bench and pull up my practice clothes. For a second, I move to undress myself. I see Shuichi with the corner of my eye and freeze. Looks at me in confusion for a few seconds, and realisation dawns on him when he sighs. You want me to turn my back, don't you? I just nod. Shuichi sighs again and turns away from me. How do you even deal with this when you're staying at a hotel for a tournament? I don't use the hotel's bath. I look for a bathhouse with private rooms. Well, that's kind of sad. Oh, beats getting naked in front of a bunch of strangers. All right, you can turn around now. Shuichi turns over again as I'm adjusting my shirt. Oh, good thing Keikun swooped in to help me. If I'd left it up to Sayaji to force me to play in plain school clothes. His expression turns sour when I mention Keisuke. Hooray for that. Still mad over last time. Oh, it was my ball and he knew it. For some reason that completely eludes me, though these two are always finding some stupid reason to fight over. I swear, it's like place, placing a burning candle next to gasoline. The slightest thing makes it catch fire. And for the last time, let it go. It's been almost two weeks already. Shuichi pouts. God, he's too childish when it comes to Keikun. Oh, let it go when he apologises. We both know that's never going to happen. Just drop it. Why do I have to be the one to accept defeat? Because when neither of you is winning, you're both just making me miserable. Fine, fine, I'll talk to him. You don't have to be rude. Well, anyway, I have to get to practice. Uh, talk to you later? Sure, see ya. I check my bag to make sure I have everything in order. Once I'm sure that nothing's missing, I grab my racket and head outside. As I start looking for Sire, I catch Keikun stretching alone at a court. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Pain suddenly shoots from my shin, making me jump forward, yelping. Son of a... 
I reflexively reached down to my foot, rubbing down to the spot that just got brutally assaulted by this monster woman. Saya merely le leers down at me with an annoyed look on her face. What took you so long? Did you get lost inside the locker room? Sheesh. I ran into Shuichi while I was changing. Also, ow! At least she's no longer breathing fire from her mouth. She seems to have mostly calmed down. She's only just annoyed. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this before, but Kay is the one you'll be playing against. You're kind of a flight risk at the time. Just like you, he got all the votes in his year. It's the first time our club has ever gotten two players with 100% of the votes. I'm really excited with this. She looks like she might start hopping in place from excess glee. I've only played against him once and that was a while ago. But I still can't see myself losing to him. I'm sorry if that sounds cocky. To be honest, I also think you'll win. Then again, this is tennis. Never put it past your opponent to win by an upset. You should be happy. it will be a great chance for you to practice. You'll probably play against him doing the prefectorals anyway. Yeah, great. Practice I didn't even want to get. Such an amazing opportunity indeed. I grumble and happy in place, still thinking of the throbbing pain in my shin. God damn it, even if she was just playing around, she kicked way too hard. She shakes her head sideways, making an exaggerated shrug. I find your lack of enthusiasm disturbing. Really? You're quoting Galaxy Wars in regular conversation now? I know she's a film nerd, but there's a limit to everything. Hey, if it fits the situation, then why shouldn't I? With a big smile on her face, Saya shrugs one last time before walking away towards the Empire chair, leaving me to watch in dismay as Keiko and finishes preparations. Wait, the Empire chair? She's the one who'll be overseeing the match today? Oh, this is just great. Is our coach absent today again? I swear, that man takes every opportunity he has to slack off. And on the first day of class? Oh, really? He said I didn't think nothing more of it. I proceeded to do the most basic warm-up, making sure to finish it in less than five minutes. It's not my usual warm-up routine, but then again, I don't even care about this match in the first place. I wish I was home. As I wake my way to the court, I can hear some of my clubmates whispering here and there, most of them sounding really excited for some reason. I guess Sai wasn't kidding when she said the people have been looking forward to this match. Damn it, why do I have to have such a stupid grin on my face? Letting an excited mood permeate in the gym affect me. I see that Kay Kuhn is waiting for me, having already finished his warm-up routine. Even though he's running around and doing stretches up until now, his clothes still look to be in pristine condition. As he sees me coming over, he flashes a smile. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Uh, you seemed a little outfit earlier. Did Saya-san give you too much trouble? Even though he's referring to us by our last names while other club members are around, now they're out of earshot of other people, he's back to calling us by our first names. Which is great, because I hate the excessive deference people treat me with, just because I happen to be a bit older. With you there, Hector. Age is just a number, after all. Uh, sorry, I still have a sleep earlier today. Sai gave me one hell of a kick to the shin, though, so that's jolted me awake. He seems almost amused by hearing it been exposed to Sire for too long, he's not even batting an eye to random acts of violence. This one has already been corrupted by us. Well, as long as you're not limping it should be fine. I'd be wary of in angering her again though. I'll say, feels like I've had a few years knocked off my life expectancy. Sire is one scary girl when she's angry. He laughs at my remark. remark. He's normally <coughs> deep voice, mm -hmm. carrying softly through the air. Yes, it's the fun thing with VNG, you don't always know what people are going to sound like till later. He's pretty subdued most of the time, but I guess there's a certain air of refinement to him. Like, almost if he wasn't just some average high school student. Well, since we'll be playing only one set, stamina won't be much of a problem. How about we go to each other, guns blazing from the start? Sounds good to me. How do we decide who gets the first serve? Should we just flip a coin? Oh, if it's okay with you, I'd like for you to take the first serve. I know it's usually your preference, I'd like to give it a try. Um, I'm sure, I guess. I mean, if you're really okay with it. Oh, I am. I think it'll be a great opportunity for me to try out a new strategy I'd come up with. Now, if you don't mind, I'll stay with this side of the court. Uh, shall we get started? I nod, wishing him good luck and heading over to my side of the court. What's up with him willingly giving me the first serve? He's totally underestimating me, isn't he? 
I walk over to my starting position when the freshman hands me two balls. Well, I guess Sai has roped them into being our ball boys for this match, huh? I take a few deep breaths to steady myself. Once I walk onto the court, I shouldn't focus on anything but my opponent. It doesn't matter if it's a tournament match or an exhibition match. It's all still tennis in the end. And I refuse to give anything less than my all when it comes to tennis. I throw the ball into the air, moving my body as quickly as I can with a whip-like motion to hit the ball at the peak of the toss. It goes past the net and hits close to the line, a powerful flat serve that goes wide. The ball bounces quickly and swiftly, sliding past Kay Kun's reach. Or at least it should have. With a swift motion he dashes the ball and returns it, though not perfectly. The ball doesn't go very deep and doesn't have much power behind it. If it's like this I can handle it easily. I reach the ball and counter it, put as much force as I possibly can without sending it flying out of the court. The ball goes the opposite side of the court as Kay Kuhn is standing in... <clears throat> I'll read that again. The ball goes the opposite side of the court as Kay Kuhn is standing in right now, hitting the ground and bouncing away before he even starts running again. 15 love. Is that how they score it in Japan? Do they say love? I have no idea. Kay Kuhn looks down at the skid mark left on the floor by the ball, whistling in admiration. <laughs> Seeing his surprise definitely makes me smile a little. The freshmen all start talking loudly and excitedly after seeing the last rally. Shut up! Saya easily solves that problem by using her usual silly disposition. The only problem is she almost gave me a heart attack. Looking over at Kay Kuhn, I notice him standing completely frozen, eyes wide as he stares at Saya. She quickly notices his gaze and laughs nervously. <laughs> uh, please continue. Well, at least she regains her composure quite fast. We both walk back to our positions, Kei Kun taking just a little longer to compose himself again. After knowing us for a full year, I'm surprised he's not used to Sire's personality yet. I take a moment to bask in this atmosphere. Even if I hesitated to be here right now, I have to admit that being on the court is the best feeling ever. Once more, I shoot a flat shot aiming for the lines. Kekun dashes the ball and, although he reaches it, he turns the ball into the net. 30 love. Kekun stares at me with a troubled look on his face. I guess he just isn't used to a truly fast serve. There aren't many players with a lot of raw power around for him to practice against, so it's no surprise he's still not used to playing against me. I guess that's one benefit to me not playing against him often. I repeat the strange strategy once more. A flat ball with lots of power is what I excel at. Although he gets the ball with relative ease, he misjudges the timing. His return ends up going too long and flies out of the court by quite a bit. Out, 40 love. I can't keep myself from grinning like an idiot. I just might be a little bit of a sadist because crushing an opponent always feels so satisfying. I never get sick of it. Kekun probably thought he could come up with some strategy to break my serve and asked me to serve first so he could attack and mess with my head. He probably thought that by breaking my serve he'd also break my concentration. Instead, it seems the spell has been turned against its user. Game Mishimaya. Game count 3 love. Mishimaya leads. The small crowd that's gathered around our court starts to cheer loudly once more. I just wish these guys would shut up. This is way too distracting. As for Kei Kun, he's seemed largely out of it since the end of the first game. I guess the shock of seeing his strategy failing so catastrophically has broken his concentration. He's completely abandoned his tactics and finds skills in favour of a brute force approach. Tennis is a sport where your mind is just as important as your body. If you start thinking too much about losing, your feel will cause your body to panic. Your body won't move as it normally does and without noticing your play becomes affected. Because of that, I managed to easily break through his serve game. And that created a downward spiral. The more he's dominated, the more he fears an eventual defeat, causing his play to worsen further, making him feel even more dominated. It's a feedback loop that you can't escape from unless you notice that you're in it in the first place. And even then, it's no small feat. Professional players struggle with this type of thing. For a high school student, this is a monumental beast all on its own. Huh. I'm usually all in favour of rest breaks, but right now I wish we could play the whole match without stopping. Not because I'd like to, but because I don't want Keisuke to have time to calm down. It might be a shitty thing to say, but I hope he stays in this slump all the way to the end of the match. Time? 
Well, no point in dwelling it. I'll just get back to the court and try to get this match done as fast as I can. Huh. This is exactly what I was hoping wouldn't happen. His eyes seem much more focused right now. I guess this small break gave him enough time to get himself back together. I really can't afford to let my guard down. Keisuke tosses the ball high into the air, making contact with it just as it begins to drop again. There's no doubt about it, this serve has gone back to normal. I guess there's no more weakness for me to exploit. The good things in life are always short-lived, after all. The ball soars over the net, making contact with the ground deep onto the court. I managed to reach the ball and send it back, but I lost my balance for a second and got a late start on my subsequent dash. Just as I take a couple of steps towards the centre of the court, Kun immediately sends a powerful shot to the side I'd been on. Not having had enough time to regain my balance, tempting to change direction again makes me trip. The ball slides through the floor, bouncing again on the sideways arch. I said my mind should reach a shot, but because it stays too close to the ground, I can't make a full swing and end up lacking power. This is likely what he was going for. It seems K Kun has decided to attack my counter, which is, admittedly, a rather annoying strategy. Right after I turn the ball to the other side of the court, he again shoots at the other side of the court to make me run. If this were a three or even a full set match, I'd be seriously worried about my stamina. In a flash, K Kun has identified the shots I most struggle against and the ones I most want to hit. By doing that, he's aggressively looking to keep his serve by chipping away at me until he can go for a winner. This style of tennis that emphasises the wide variation of shots and the delicate touch is his speciality. It's thanks to this that K Kun managed to overcome his average constitution, becoming a well known player in our region. Still, he has yet to make a breakthrough when it comes to the national competitions. Since I can't fall into a comfortable pace and have not been able to hit the ball as I want to, and as such can't put away a winner. I continue to struggle with the rally until Keisuke eventually runs me out of the point. Keisuke continues to use this same strategy for the remainder of the game. I'm only able to score a single point before he wins. We promptly start the fifth game. This time I have to try and hit my best possible serve to keep myself on the lead during my service game. While I fully expect myself to have the advantage on my serve, I still don't want to be caught up on the long rally against him. I don't have that much stamina. I go for a strong, flat serve to the centre of the court. Although it's high risk, the ball makes it right on the edge of the court, painting the line. Despite that, K Kun reaches it, returning the deep ball with tons of topspin. Using the advantage given to me by my serve game, I quickly return a strong flat shot to the other side of the court. The speed of the shot doesn't give him time to ready his next swing. If he doesn't have much time to prepare, he can't send a very precise shot. He ends up lightly tapping it to my side of the court. I rush over to it and strike with everything I have, putting away an easy winner. Fifteen love. K Kun looks somewhat angry. I see him muttering something to himself before he gets back to position. This is the main reason I avoided playing against him for so long. K Kun falls in the category of tactical players. He's constantly running simulations and thinking up different strategies to deal with any problems he might face. Ordinarily, when faced with a huge hurdle, a player like myself would attempt to find an answer through trial and error. A player like Keisuke, though, is constantly analysing the shifts in pattern. Because of that, he can shift into an answer almost instantly. I'm forced to keep changing up shots far too often in an attempt to throw him off. In the end, I'm not truly forcing my way through. I'm just taking a detour that forces me to spend extra energy. I just hate having to deal with any wall that my power can't break through. Because I'm forced to constantly think and look for alternatives, the strain of having to sustain such a degree of concentration while keeping up my usual high-paced game makes me get tired faster than usual. Still, I can't just shoot blindly, otherwise he will eventually find a way to shut me out. I decide to change up my serves a little bit. By adding a few spin shots to my serves, which are usually all flat anyway, I can throw him off for a while. I try putting as much power as I can into this spin serve, though the ball is significantly slower than before. Crap, I'm not too good at using spin. Because of the way a player grips his racket and the hand he uses to hold it, the ball tends to naturally spin into one direction. That's one of the reasons left-handed players are favoured in the game, since there aren't many of them and players tend to have already ingrained their reactions to different shots. Any difference, no matter how small, can throw them off. Most players capitalise on this natural spin, hitting spin shots to make the ball slide in that direction. 
since hitting the spin towards the opposite direction makes it so the ball doesn't slide so much to the side, tends to be not as favoured. But because it isn't as favoured, it becomes unexpected, and I use this to catch Keikun by surprise. He reads my serve and rushes into position to return, but because the ball doesn't escape as far to the side as he expects it, he ends up hitting the ball too close to the grip of his racket. His return is shallow, leaving me an opportunity to attack. 30 love. Keikun looks just about ready to throw his tr racket on the floor. He's gripping it so tight that his hands are shaking. I'm not exactly happy to see him like this, but I decide to bur bury those feelings for now. He's my friend, but we're on the court. I can't show sympathy. This time I go with a wide slice. Once again, since I'm serving the ball to a direction opposite of its spin, instead of sliding away from the court, it angles itself back in. The awkward angle of the shot causes Kei Kun to hit another weak return, which I easily put away. 40 love. The freshmen all chat excitedly while they watch the match. There are so many voices at the same time they can barely make out what they're saying. Well, not that I'm trying to anyway. Kei Kun seems like he can't even notice them, not reacting at all to their voices. That guy's concentration is on a whole other level. I mean, that's already scary enough by itself. I ready myself for another serve. I take advantage of the indecision my past two serves created into a strong topspin shot wide. Keikun is caught by surprise. Having tried to anticipate my serve, he ran towards the centre and had to double back immediately. Because he can't reach the ball, I score a service ace to take the game. The freshman abrupt in cheers for being reprimanded by the other club members. Game Mishimaya. Game count 4-1. Mishimaya leads. We take another break. I slide into my seat to rest for a bit. When I glance over at Kei Kuhn, he has an incredibly scary look on his face. He might look like the meek silent type. He really gets fired up when it comes to tennis, huh? Time! We both get up from our chairs at the same time. I want to end this match as soon as possible and my goal should be to break his serve. I have had enough time to get used to his tricky style. Not only that, he feels like he's slipping. He's getting impatient and that shows. I should use that to my advantage to break his serve. We both get to our positions. Kei Kun sends the ball high before striking it, hitting a strong flat serve to the centre of the court. I was already expecting him to do something like that. People tend to put too much force on the shot when they're angry whilst ignoring spin and placement. Having gotten the ball a lot earlier, I have ample time to prepare, hitting my strongest shot back at him. The ball hits the ground and bounces away from his reach, scoring me a return ace. Seems that with each passing moment, Kei Kun becomes more and more agitated. I should really try to calm down. Playing like this is only going to drag him down further. Love 15. Well, it can't be helped. If he's not trying to help himself, there isn't anything I can do to help him. And to be honest, I feel that he'd fly off the rails if I did try. Kei Kun takes a while to get into position. He starts trying his shoes repeatedly, probably trying to calm himself down. Well, he definitely looks to have calmed down a bit. He serves the ball again, shooting a slice serve towards the centre. If it weren't for the spin on the ball, that would practically be a body shot. As soon as the ball gets close, I sidestep it and hit an angled shot to the side of the court. The ball practically paints the line, bouncing high from all the top spin I put on it. I really have to be more careful with my spin shots. They're barely going in right now. I might actually make a mistake if I keep going like this. Keiko reaches it and effortlessly, effortlessly hits it back at me with another slice, going right to the centre of the court. I hit it back with as much power as I can while staying in the cross court, but can't get good contact with the ball and it ends up hitting the upper part of the net. You're both taken by surprise. The ball topples down to Keiko on the side of the court. He dashes over the net in an attempt to reach it, but ends up being too late. Love 30. Sorry about that. I didn't... I apologise, it's, it's the proper thing to do. That's fine. He nearly fits those words out. That's how angry he is right now. I'm sure he doesn't blame me for it, but it's hard to keep your feelings in check when you're under pressure. Kei conserves a strong flat, this time we're aiming wide. I dash towards the ball and hit it back, but since I can't get to a good position, the ball ends up being too weak. Kei Kun reaches it and puts it away in an instant. 15.30 My return was pretty terrible so there wasn't anything I could do. 
Keisuke might look like it, but he's certainly a high level player. If I give him any openings, he'll certainly go for them in an instant. Keikun serves once again, this time with a much easier time reaching it. I return an angled shot that hits the ground before the service line and bounces away from the court. Keikun is caught by surprise and has to rush to the ball. I'd have to strike and he runs up to the net, probably to try and restrict the angle of my return, around one step ahead of him. Right as he reaches the net, I lob the ball high over his head. He immediately starts running back and I don't doubt for a second that he will reach. He manages to hit the ball at the last second, barely putting any power to it as the ball bounces a few centimetres away from the net. I reach it for its first bounce and right after it goes high again, I hit it with a drop shot. Since I dropped the ball while being so close to the net, there's barely any power left in it. Keikun doesn't even make it to the service line for it double bounces. The first years are up in cheers and I'm pretty sure some of the second and third years joined them in it. I said shut up! Well, she certainly has a way of hand in the crowd. That way is fear. 1540. It seems that the pressure is starting to get to him. His face is a completely open book. No matter how he looks at it, I've been dominating him on his service game and he can't do a thing about it. Right now he'd have to score twice in a row just to get us to deuce. I definitely hold the advantage here. He serves the ball again, but just like his first serve of the game, he was so anxious to finish things fast he got predictable. I easily anticipate him to put the ball away of the return ace. Game Mishimaya. Game count 5-1. Mishimaya leads. As if he had lost all the drive that fueled him so far, Keisuke's shoulders sag. I don't blame him for being discouraged, but right now he looks as if he's already been defeated. What happened to try your best until the end? What's the point of continuing to play when you've already given up? I'm starting to get angry because of his attitude. I'll just finish this soon so we can both stop this miserable match. Game set and match won by Mishimaya. Count 6-1. Sai has barely finished announcing the score and Case K has already walked out of the court, stuffing his racket back into his bag and slipping away with it. Saya doesn't miss a beat, getting down from his seat and walking after him in a rush. Tennis players really have glass hearts sometimes. A little crowd of freshmen gathers around me, showering me with praise and admiration. And using this as an opportunity to ask for tips. I make no effort to listen, walking towards the locker room. I just want to rest. I don't care. And right there, standing in front of the door, is Shuichi. Man, you're heartless. Don't you know how to go easy on people? Oh, it's good to do it every now and then. Sure. Then I'll have him getting mad at me for underestimating him. He shrugs. Oh, our cheering over here was so loud we could hear it from our side of the building. Our coach asked me to come over and see what the fuss was about. Although I ended up sticking around to watch you play. <laughs> you sure are carefree with your duties, huh? Oh, I enjoy watching you play. Why are you so surprised? I have to ask, though. Why didn't you tell me you'd be playing against Ushihara? Oh, Sai didn't tell me. She decided to keep it a secret until the last minute because I was, as she says it, a flight risk. Oh, that sounds about right. Hey! Oh, sorry, but I think she's right. I imagine you'd have gone home the first chance you got if you knew about this. And after all, you've been talking about how annoying it is to play against Ushihara since you first watched him practice. That's only partly true. Oh, really? Oh, what part of what I said was wrong? Shut up. <laughs> as easy to rile up as usual. Oh, right, I nearly forgot. Here. Shuichi hands me a can. I can see beads of condensation rolling down from it. it must be really cold. Oh, I picked up an energy drink for you. Figured you'd want one after the match. I know orange is your favourite, so I picked that one. Ooh, thanks. Oh, you're a real lifesaver. I immediately start drinking it down without a care in the world. In just a few seconds, the entire can has already been emptied. Wow, were you really that thirsty? You have no idea. Without a warning, Shuichi puts a hand on my head and begins to casually pet me. I don't even notice that's what he's doing until he's already started, at which point I'm so shocked by his complete lack of self-consciousness about the whole thing. If there's one thing that needs to be said about him, he's a very touchy-feely kind of guy. Myself, Sire, sister, and even Keisuke, but on the rare occasion not going at each other's throats, have already been made victims of this. 
It wouldn't be half bad if he kept these things in private places either. But somehow he always tries to pull them off in public. As soon as I snap back to reality, I slap his hand away from my head, just as he began tugging on my ears. Oh, no fun. Jeez, you figure I'd kill his pet from the way he just reacted. It's not even like I minded in the first place. I just don't like when he pulls this stuff stunt in public. Oh yeah, well, what can you do? For some reason, he seems to find my rejection funny. I don't like being messed with in public, you know that. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll try to refrain from doing it again. That's a lie. Oh, by the way, what did you think of Urushihara? This was the first time you played against him since the Prefectural's tournament last year, wasn't it? I turn around to look for Keikun, but can't seem to find him. I don't know. He's a good player, I'll give him that, but... I don't think he's ready for a major competition just yet. He'll probably get destroyed by the higher-ranking players. Oh, didn't he lose on the first round at last year's national tournament? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean by it. Oh, I suppose you're right. I kind of feel bad about him, though. What Shuichi's talking about is last year's All Japan Junior Tournament, the most important tournament in Japan for tennis players under the age of 18. Keisuke managed to qualify it for it last year. Unfortunately for him, though, he got matched up against the number four player on the first round, and lost without taking a single set. The competition for that event is brutal. I myself got all the way to the finals, but lost to Takagi Tanabe, the number one player in the national rank. Oh, Rishihara Straw got unlucky, huh? I nod, pursing my lips. This sort of thing happens every now and then. If you want to be safe and have an easier time in the first round, you need to be a seeded player. Well, K Kun is going to have to try and get a seed ranking this year. That's pretty much the only thing he can do. Well, what would he need to do to become seeded? Well, considering his current rank, he'd have to win at the Saitama Prefecture Tournament, then place in the top four of the Kanto Tournament. And since we know for a fact he's not going to win the Prefectural, where should he finish on the regional to get a seed? Second place. Shuichi, Shuichi whistles in admiration. Oh, Roshihara is pretty much screwed, huh? Oh, it just goes to show. Being number two in Satama doesn't really mean much. Competition here is pretty light compared to other areas in the country. Yeah, that's true. Right now, Tokyo and Hokkaido have the highest concentration of high rank players. Satama is somewhere in the lower end of the rankings. You're know, probably the only reason Satama isn't dead last. I wouldn't go that far. I honestly don't think the level of players in our area has fallen. I think the competition has just improved a lot. Uh, what do you mean? I mean that the current generation is probably much stronger than the last ones. Back when I was still a freshman in high school, I'd routinely beat juniors and seniors. It was against the other freshmen that I struggled. Oh, never really thought about it like that. Oh, kind of sucks when you're trying to go pro and have a hard time standing out. Not that you're having a problem like that, of course. You already stand out plenty. Ah, uh, yes. Shuichi is one of the few people I've told of my desire to go pro. So far, I've only told my family, my coach, and a few close friends. Of course, most of the people involved in the tennis scene already expect me to go pro, so it's not like there's much of a difference. But even at the risk of sounding superstitious, I'm afraid that if I tell too many people, I'll end up jinxing it. What about you? Have you decided when you're going to go pro yet? I already told you I'm not. Have I ever mentioned that that's a stupid idea? Oh uh, yes, many times. Too many, in fact. Ugh, he's too stubborn. Shuichi's one of the best volleyball players in the country, yet he refuses to even consider the possibility of becoming a professional player. It's just so much wasted potential. I can already tell you what you're thinking, so I'll just stop you right there. I'm not in the mood to have another discussion on me becoming a professional. Ugh, why not? Well, instead I'd rather talk about something a little more important. Oh, like what? He really knows how to rope me into changing the subject of conversation. Use my curiosity against me. Uh, your progress, or lack thereof. I honestly don't see much improvement at all from last year. Well, what happened to you? Uh, I was thinking the same thing. I throw the no empty can of sports drink into the nearby trash, but it falls inside with a satisfying clink. I know I ask this a lot, but are you okay? Are you sure you're not going through any trouble? I'm fine, big guy. I guess I'm just not putting in left work, that's all. I'm honestly not as convinced of the truth of my words as I might sound. Just thinking about some of the guys I'll have to face again this year almost invokes a feeling of dread. Well, hopefully this year I'll be able to turn things around. 
Oh, Tanabe is an invincible. I'm sure you can beat him if you try hard enough. I'm not so sure of that either. Yeah, I suppose. How about we cut this conversa conversation here, though? I'd rather not think about all this stuff right now. Oh, sure thing. In that case, how about you get into the locker room and at least towel, towel yourself off? No offence, but you're smelling kind of right. He says that with the most innocent smile in the world, even though he's definitely taking a jab at me to tease me. Wow, thanks for the delicacy on the matter. Alright, I'll rephrase that. Dude, you fucking stink. Don't you have a fucking shower? Never mind. Shuichi stands there, grinning like an idiot, his tail wagging left and right. I have to give him props for being able to be so cheery about everything. Heading into the locker room, I notice it's mostly empty save for two members of the volleyball club. The only reason I can even tell who they are is because they have team shirts on them. Uh, Tamita, Ayano, the locker room is in the break room. Stop slacking off and get back to practice. Two look at Shuichi with a scared look while dashing away and back into the volleyball courts. Aren't you slacking off too? Oh, they don't need to know that. Demon. Shuichi flicks me in the forehead, sending a small jolt over my entire body. What was that for? Oh, you think too loud. I can tell you're thinking bad things of me just by the look on your face. Am I really that transparent? Oh, to me you are. I don't think this is something to be happy about. You don't have to wait around for me to leave. Oh, but it's more fun this way. As always, I can't understand what goes on in his head. You're just staying around because you want to get a private show, aren't you? Shuichi chuckles, leaning his back against a nearby locker. <laughs> I wish. I already know the mere thought of getting changed in a public locker always already makes you squeamish. What? what? No, it doesn't. I do it all the time, you know. It does. It makes me so squeamish. I die for admitting to that. Jeez, you're sighing and pouting so much. Shouldn't you be happy you just got a victory? You're making too much fuss out of something minor. It was just a practice match, after all. Oh, please. Both are just as important to you. You always say that, remember? I guess. Oh, you've been too negative here. Look on the bright side. Now you know you can easily beat Urushihara in an official match. Isn't that great? I wouldn't go that far. I was lucky I managed to do so well today. I wouldn't bet my chips on it happening again. Keikun might not be a skill, but his tricky style and strategies can corner if you're not careful. Suddenly, the sound of metal banging on metal echoes through the locker, catching us both by surprise. We both turn around and see Keisuke staring at us with a face that spells out impending doom. I don't think I've ever seen him this mad before. Oh, Orochihara, it's just you. Oh, I was afraid someone fell onto a locker or something. You can't do this, you know. You've got to respect school property. I'm asking myself the same question. When the hell did he get here? Did he pass by us when we were talking and we didn't notice? I know for a fact he wasn't here when we walked into the room. Although from the look on Shuichi's eyes, I can already guess that he knew Kun was here and said those things on purpose. In hindsight, I should have seen this one come in. Shuichi isn't the type to make light of a person's skills. Should have imagined he was plotting something. I'm sorry I've made such a poor opponent. I'll try to do better next time, Your Highness. Oh, don't be silly. We both know such a thing would be impossible. Oh boy, are these two going to go at it again? These two seem to look for every opportunity to jab at each other. I don't know how these two manage to be friends when they behave so poorly around each other. Oh really? Uh, what exactly do you mean by that? I feel like I shouldn't be so calm in a situation like this, but then again, I've already seen this happen so many times I feel I've become jaded. I want to go home and be done with this. Oh, I mean, come on, this is Hector we're talking about. You might be good, but you can't possibly think you could compare, right? Now that would just be crazy. Why do I get the feeling I've turned into a babysitter over the past year? Maybe we should just cut them off now and avoid any escalation. Enough! My sudden shouting makes them both jump back in surprise, like a complete shock on their faces. Wait, isn't this a little much? All I did was shout a little. What are you two looking so surprised for? No, don't let yourself calm down. Keep up the strict persona. They need to be taught a lesson. That is it. I've had it with the two of you. You guys have any idea of how much a nightmare it was during this entire break? Sire and I had to keep, had kept having to run around and keeping you two from killing each other. We didn't get to relax whatsoever that whole time. That's it. I'm done. I'm not going to deal with you two anymore. Either you two apologise to each other right now and stop behaving like little children, or I'm done dealing with either of you. 
Uh, I know I was just shouting, but someone please say something? Shuichi is the first to recompose himself. He clears his throat, looking at me with an apologetic expression. Uh, sorry, Hector, I guess we crossed the line. Oh, I'm sorry we troubled you so much. And, um... Uh, I'm sorry to you, Shahara. I shouldn't have provoked you like that. It was childish of me. Seems that seeing Shuichi apologise and somehow snapped Keisuke back to reality. But what's with that look on his face? Don't use this as another chance to pick a fight or I swear I'm going to slap you. I... I'm sorry, Arata. I let my emotions get the better of me. Uh, please forgive me um, for all of the spring break. Uh, you too, Hector-san. Wow, this went beyond my wildest dreams. I never expected these to apologise so sincerely to each other. I mean, forgetting the fact that they're not even looking at each other in the eye. Oh, it's fine if you to avoid doing this kind of thing again. Honestly, what is it with you two anyway? Why do you keep pulling stuff like this? Well, teasing Roshihara is kind of fun. Well, I guess I've been going a little overboard. And I guess I have fun antagonising Narata too. It's a bit refreshing when he acts that way. I can't tell if you two are supposed to be fighting or playing around anymore. What are you two, nine? Well, like I said, avoid putting this kind of crap in the future and it'll be fine. You two are friends, for God's sake. Act like it. Oh, will do. Yeah, got the message loud and clear. Well, uh, <clears throat> wrong voice. <clears throat> well, um, anyway, I have some things I need to do, and I should really get to them. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, see you two later. Keikun finishes, drops his towel on top of his bag, and runs back to the courts in a hurry. Huh, poor bastard. Huh, what? Oh, it's beyond me to be worried about Urushihara, but... This is the first time you ever yelled at him. You probably traumatised the poor guy. Now he's a poor guy? I was yelling at you too. How come he's the only one getting traumatised? Oh, please. How long do you think I've known you for? Well, I'm used to getting yelled at. That's not a good thing to get used to. Well, I should probably get back to my own practice, I guess. Uh, sorry again for today. I'll see you later. See ya. Huh. I think I was too hard on them. I tried to do something I'm not used to doing and I messed up. I guess at least now I can have peace. I'm not really in the mood to continue practice today. I think I'm just going to tell Sire I'm leaving early for the day. I'll finish toweling myself off and head back to the courts. And because some of these days are amazingly long, I'm going to break my normal habit of doing a day per video. And we're going to pick it up from here on the next video i hope you like the this one let me know what you think i'm gonna put a link to basket's patreon and the link i can normally do with these things so you can check his stuff out and uh, maybe support him and like i say if you want to uh, hear other takes on it there are some more on youtube just do a quick search for tennis ace and i do recommend duck the red panda as usual so that's it for now i'll be back with uh probably password next time until then bye now